Hello everyone, this is Mike Fauché, and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I want to talk about several Miras products, such as the Presence Sensor, Temperature Sensor, and the Hub. We'll go through the setup and features of these products, and to see how you can integrate them in your smart home. Watch the rest of this video to find out more about these devices, and don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help support the channel. Full disclosure, I've used Miras products for years now, but they did send me these devices for free of charge. They didn't pay for or influence this video in any way, nor have they seen this video before it was published. Let's look at the hardware and then set up and configure each of these devices and go through an overview of their features. To start with, let's go over the presence sensor. If you use smart home tech, then you already know that most useful automations are usually in lighting. However, motion sensors that are commonly used to trigger lighting are a challenge as they rely on motion to trigger, and they're not really ideal if you're sitting or not moving around in the room. It's pretty common if you're sitting at a desk or a chair for the lights to just go off as it didn't detect any movement. Enter the present sensor. These sensors use a technology called millimeter wave, which works very similar to radar. Once it detects you, it's extremely good at knowing if you're still in the room, even if you're not currently moving. So why are we not all using presence sensors instead of motion? The challenge is that presence sensors can be sensitive to interference. They're a lot more expensive, and they usually require setup and calibration. In addition, since these typically use more power than motion sensors, they usually require an external power source. When me, Ross approached me with the opportunity to test out their new presence sensor, I was a little skeptical, mainly because I have two of the Acara presence sensors, and they've been very problematic and virtually unusable in my environment. So the possibility that this might actually work was really appealing to me. Let's start by taking a look at the presence sensor, and then we can go over the temperature sensor and hub later in the video. In the box, you get a USB cord, a USB power adapter for the particular region, and the sensor itself. You also get some cable guides, double-sided adhesive, and a pet shield that's used to prevent animal detection. As with most matter devices, you get a matter code on the side of the device so that it can be paired to your environment. Pulling open the back of the device, and this is where you can plug in the USB cable and route it in a couple different directions depending on how you plan on mounting the device. Once you power the device, the front light will start blinking and letting you know that it's ready to be paired. You'll need to download the Miras app and create an account if you don't already have one. Once you have the app up and running, click on the plus sign and scroll down to the smart sensor and alarm and tap on it. Scroll down to the MS600 and tap on it and you'll be prompted to watch the installation video. Hit next to continue and you get to see a quick guide on attaching the USB cord. Click next and you see a quick guide on routing the cord. Go to the next screen and power the device if you haven't already done so. The next screen you'll get some quick instructions on how to add a matter device and after you read them click on next to continue and select your particular platform. For my application this will be Apple Home and again you'll be given an option to watch a video to add the Miras matter device to your Apple Home. When you select next to continue scan the matter code. It should find your device and give you the option to add it to your smart home. It may take a little time and then give you the option of setting your location, naming the device, and then hit continue. When you're done, there's a couple of other screens, and then you're taken to the main screen where you should see the sensor that you just installed. When you tap on the sensor you just installed, you'll be taken through an automatic process if this is the first time that you've used the device in order to calibrate it. Currently, it's mainly used for sidewall installation, so after you read the explanation, select sidewall, and you can start the seven-step process to making sure it's positioned and calibrated. The first step is the angle of the sensor once you mount it. You might want to make sure it's pointing at an angle that will cover the entire room, especially in the area that you think you spend your most time in, such as a desk or a workbench. Select next after you position it and you'll be given some considerations about how to face the device to make sure that there's no movement directly in front of it such as fans or open windows. You may have to experiment a bit for the best position in your room. Next is the height position. Selecting next is an additional consideration for proper positioning and angling of the device. Next couple of steps are information about space learning feature. So read the next couple of screens and when you're ready select space learning. Make sure that there are no pets or people or fans in the room 
and start the space learning process. If there's anything in the room or if you're in the room when you're doing it, it may not detect the area correctly. It'll take a couple of minutes and when it's done, select OK. In the following screen, you'll be instructed about biological detection and if you have small kids or pets, you may want to install the pet shield that comes in the box. And finally, the last step will be the distance detection, which you can accurately set the detection distance. When you hit next, you'll see real time when you are being detected, as well as whether or not you're moving towards or away from the sensor, as well as the distance readout. If you're not happy with how it's working, select the hamburger menu up in the upper right hand corner and select the detection distance where you can actually change the setting to make it closer or further out by sliding the range up and down. Increase the distance if you want to catch a presence sooner, but remember that it will lose some sensitivity when you go beyond 6 meters. When you're ready, hit save and you're good to go. As the device has already been installed in HomeKit or whatever platform you selected, you only need the app for tuning the hardware, updating the firmware, and not necessarily for automation, although you can use it for that. There's a couple other items to review in the app's main screen that you may want to go back and adjust. First is the absence confirmation time setting. This sets how long you have to be gone before it switches to no presence. The shorter the time, the faster it switches state. There does appear to be a minimum of 15 seconds based on my testing. There's also a detection sensitivity setting and alerts. Now that we've seen how to set this up, let's go ahead and test it out real quick. I've set this up above my office window and it's pointed in the general area where I work and sit. When I walk into the room, you can see the sensors triggered immediately and it will stay on for as long as I'm in the room. When I leave the room, it waits about 20 seconds or whatever time setting you've set and then turns off the lights based on the automation that I set. And again, this is of course based on whatever platform you're creating your automations with. For me, this was HomeKit. So let's take a quick look at the Miras Matter Hub and the temperature sensor. Though it seems like we get too many separate hubs lately, there is an inherent benefit in using a dedicated hub. For starters, it's a Matter-enabled hub, so all your Matter devices can pair to this hub and will instantly be available on your supported platforms, such as Apple's HomeKit, Google Home, SmartThings, and even Home Assistant. For example, if you're in the Miros ecosystem, this hub allows you to pair multiple devices, such as sensors, without choking up your Wi-Fi network and using up a bunch of IP addresses. And it allows you to make it a little bit easier to manage multiple devices. Looking at the hub itself, visibly there's not much to it. You have an RJ45 jack, a USB-C power jack, and a pairing button, as well as a matter code on the side of the device. Let's get this paired to my platform and then we can see how to pair the temperature sensor. To pair the hub is really easy. From the Miros app, just hit the plus button and add a device. Select Smart Hub and on the next screen, pick the model. For this particular model, it's the MSH450. Make sure the hub is powered on and the LED will begin to flash. Hit next and you'll get some information on adding a matter device, which is pretty much identical to what we saw when we paired the present sensor and select next to continue. Select your matter platform and optionally watch the video or move to the next screen and scan the matter code with your phone to add the device. It should prompt you that it's adding a bridge and in a few seconds you'll get a message that accessories added to the bridge will automatically be added to your smart home platform. Select OK, pick the room and give it a bridge name. In a few seconds you'll get a prompt that the device was added. To pair the sensor, again click on the plus sign and select Smart Sensor and Alarm. Select the model that you have, which in this case is the MS-130, and choose the correct pairing hub, which in this setup was the MSH-450. The next couple of screens will tell you that you need to have the hub set up first, so you can skip past those, and then you get to the double click your pairing button on the hub to enter the pairing mode. Now press the right and left button on the temperature sensor itself, and once you release the button, it'll bind it to the hub. Name it and select Finish, and you're good to go. The device will automatically show up in your smart home platform, which for me is HomeKit, so that it can be used in automations. Sitting in a room on your desk, the temperature sensor adds a nice visual twist to a multifunction sensor, making it easier to quickly look at the screen, see the time and date, light levels, humidity, and of course the temperature. The only minor thing I found a little confusing is in the light levels. The real-time readings that you get in the app, as well as your home app, read in Lux. 
However, on the display, it reads in luminance levels, which is a range. I think I understand why they did this, but it's still a bit confusing. Fortunately, it uses Lux and all the automations, which is more consistent with other manufacturers and more consistent with what we're used to. As I have been using Miras products for years now, starting with my garage door opener, which was the first Miras product I ever bought. I've always been happy with the performance, functionality, and the great price point. And the devices today are no exception. As I mentioned earlier, I've had horrible luck with the Acara presence sensors. The Acara devices have many more features and they can be configured to support multiple zones, but unlike the Miros device, which only supports one zone. On paper, it sounds like a really good thing. However, the Acara sensors are simply too flaky and unreliable for me to use, even as a single zone device. And after many days of trying, I just simply gave up. The Miros presence sensor, on the other hand, supports only one zone, and I had it up and running reliably in just a few minutes. They're cheaper, and in my experiences, they're incredibly more reliable. I'd rather have one reliable sensor that works all the time in a room than one that I can break up into zones and give me inconsistency. The Miros presence sensor has worked extremely well for me in both my office and in my kitchen area, and I'll be adding more of these in the very near future. As for the Wi-Fi hub and the temperature sensor, they also work very, very well and have been very stable. The only minor issue I ran into with the temperature sensor was having a slight delay in updating the readings, which I assume is related to battery power or battery savings of some kind. It's not really an issue, it only affects the readout and not the response to any of your automations. I kind of like having a visual device in addition to the sensors being read for my smart home. In terms of the Wi-Fi hub, again, depending on your configuration, having an inexpensive matter hub that you can attach other devices other than Miros is extremely helpful, and the fact that you can integrate other Miros products allows you to scale your network without slamming your Wi-Fi network connection. A big thanks to the team at Miros for sending me these products and allowing me to test them. Well, that's about it for today's video, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.